All right, audiobooks versus physical books. We're gonna have a discussion with the three of us here, Scott, OC, and Zach. We're gonna discuss what we think, um, our thoughts on audiobooks versus physical books. Um, what are the differences? Why we would prefer one over the other? Or if there are no preferences for our own individual opinions? Because really, it, experiencing um, a story is very subjective. So we're just gonna get into um, our thoughts on it. What do you guys think? Um, for me personally, I, I do have a general preference to physically reading, although they're both, they both have their different usefulness in, in my opinion. Um, I've definitely used audiobooks when I need to like do a quick read, um, very, very rapidly. And that helps a lot So because there's a lot of, so when you yeah. say like rapidly, do you mean like you set it to like times two times three or something oh. like that. <laughs> I, I will, I will set it to like times two because if I, if there's some book that I just, I, I want to read because I mean, I don't read anything just to get it out of the way, but if there are books where I'm like, I want to read this, but I don't want to spend too much time on this, then an audiobook I feel is perfect for that kind of thing. Gotcha. So it's like low priority books. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of. Because I think for me, in the way that I experience books, um, physically reading it puts me into the the world a lot easier. Whereas when I'm listening to it with audio, it's it's not as immersive, in my opinion. Interesting. As far as like how mm -hmm. I experience it. But yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, so for me, when it comes to audiobooks versus physical books, I think it's two different experiences, and they both can work hand in hand in many ways. For me, I'm a book person. Oh my, I actually have some books over here. Uh, but for me personally, when it comes to it, I like physical books when I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm actively reading. I've turned off everything. When I'm using an audiobook, it's usually when I'm working out, doing a task, doing an errand. And it's more of, I'll, this is just me, I love my Audible, is that I'll go to sleep listening to audiobooks rather than <laughs> reading because sometimes it's easier to just, you know, close my eyes and imagine it that way. I use it like, you know, the Taskmaster, you turn off everything and just, I'm using all the RAM in my brain to imagine it rather than experience it at times. And both are different and actually... Here's the thing when it comes to audiobooks, a bad performance can kill the audiobook, whereas mm -hmm. your interpretation of it can only go so far. And I've listened to so many bad audiobooks where it's the person's not even trying or there's just something in it that just annoys me to the point of where I, I don't like the story. Yeah, that yeah. Fun? That's that's one thing that's definitely a downside to audiobooks. If the performance is bad, it can definitely hinder or like make you like the book less. Um, Mm -hmm. um i think personally for me <laughs> i kind of have to go not that it's one or the other but for me I, I more often listen to audiobooks than i do read the physical books that might just be my lifestyle because i find it like extremely convenient to have the mm -hmm. audio going on while like say i'm editing a video or while i'm driving or just anything like that where my brain doesn't require it's more a repetitive task like cleaning or something it's just i can focus on the audiobook while doing the task that task that i already know how to do um mm -hmm. yeah and also for me i i the first time i got into audiobooks i think the first story audiobook i listened to was actually Mistborn from brandon sanderson <laughs> oh yeah that's that's a, that's a good one i see i listened to the prologue for that to go to sleep because the first part of that <laughs> is so soothing for a man burning down a plantation it makes it so much fun oh um, man like for me when it comes to if we're going to like early memories is i think the earliest audiobook this is going back in the day when you still had them on cds it was a series of unfortunate events but they're all read by tim Ooh. curry and to me, that is the highest of the high gold standard of all audiobooks because <laughs> I, it's, it's hard to distinguish that audiobook compared to actually reading it because the voices that Tim Curry does is the mm. internal voices yeah, yeah. now of what I hear. And, there, and there's the, I, uh, the other side of it, right? If the performance is like great, it can actually enhance the book, I mm -hmm. feel. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can I can only imagine because that book I feel would be very much elevated with the proper audiobook. Oh yeah, and so those books especially, I think that would be interesting to, and, and to the good, visit. And the good contrast to that actually is if we're talking about this is actually they couldn't get Tim Curry for two of the audiobooks. I think because he was doing spam a lot, so the actual author you know read them and it was mm. awful. Oh man, oh. was it bad. I mean, as much as I like Daniel Handler, he's very monotone and he does really bad voices compared to that one. Like it's like night and day. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do audiobooks um really until my undergrad. And because that was like if I wanted to read something interesting. Yeah. But interestingly, the first time I did it was for a book that was assigned to me and it was like I don't necessarily know if I have the time to read this because I kind of like was procrastinating on it a little bit and so I got the audiobook and I put that on like two times speed (laughs) and just listened to it as I was doing my thing yeah actually my so it came in very handy yeah my first experiences with audiobooks was um self-improvement books so Mm. I used to listen to those all the time like after I graduated from college like for about two to three years so until they got like so repetitive that I just stopped <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah I, I listened to them at like two times speed sometimes even like 2.5 depending on how slow they read it and I got a lot out of it I, f- I feel but it's when I moved over to actually starting to listen to, fi- to fiction, which is pretty much all I listen to these days, um, I could not take anything past two times because I feel like you lose so much detail after at, at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting thing because for me, I'm definitely much more inclined to for nonfiction books or like self-help books or more informational resource books i'll do audiobooks for those ones and i think that it's easy for me to understand and like catch yeah because it's almost like a lecture details. you know <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah and like i like listening to podcasts a lot and so it almost feels like a podcast as opposed to reading something fictional or fantastical or sci-fi where i'm trying to have an experience and the the listening doesn't necessarily translate to feeling the full experience for me in that same way. See, for me, I might be actually a little bit of a devil's advocate. I actually don't like the two times speed a little bit, depending on the audiobook, because it's the same argument that people had when Netflix was like, we'd like to add two times speed to our... Oh, man. <laughs> as, as a feature. And it's, it's one of those, like, yeah, you can watch shows quick, quicker and binge it. But yeah. when it comes to the performance and timing, like, I would never do two times speed for... Um, the Game of Thrones audiobooks by Roy Detrice. Mm. The guy did 224 voices. They're all pretty much like the <laughs> same, but he's still giving different inflections, and it's more of an audio drama at times than it is like reading an audio book. And it, it depends. Like for certain books, like nonfiction, yeah, because sometimes it may be the author reading them. But it, it's one of those things depending on the performance, because I consider audiobook narration is the same as, you know, voice acting or performing on the stage in many yeah. ways because a lot of the people that do them right. it's really ta- you're sitting in a booth just reading a book all day and that can be as taxing as doing a full performance because sometimes audiobooks can be 48 60 hours and by that time <laughs> that person's like held hostage <laughs> by those takes oh man I, I i couldn't do it i wouldn't have the, the gusto or stamina for that <laughs> yeah i mean I, I th- for, for my, from my experiences, I enjoyed a lot of the audiobooks that I've listened to. I, I, th- I mean, mostly it's the Brandon Sanderson ones with, I think, Michael Kramer <laughs> as the main narrator. At first, yeah. I just had to get used to his voice because I wasn't, I was more used to the, I guess, authors or whatever for the self-improvement books reading their stuff. But then it, for a fiction one, I wasn't used to it at all. So it was kind of like an interesting first experience, but once you get used to it, it it sort of just works well, especially if their acting is good. Yeah, I actually have a funny story about this. So when Rhythm of War came out, you, you know I was like on the war path of just reading it. I had <laughs> the digital version, the physical version, and an <laughs> audiobook version of it, and I had to go up to 
uh, Las Vegas to visit my sister for Thanksgiving. So I spent a good four hours just listening to the audiobook and just being engrossed. And then when I got there, because I had it on Kindle and Audible, I could just pick up my Kindle. Right where on, you left right off. Right where I left off, and I kept going. Like, man, that was a journey. Guess I'll read some more. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is the advantage of, of modern technologies. Like, you can literally go from listening to it to, like, picking it up, writing where you left off in your digital, and you can carry that all around with you wherever you go and stuff like that. So, yeah, there are definitely benefits to, to not having to lug around a huge book or a, a tome like Rhythm of War yeah. all day. <laughs> And that's the thing, especially when it comes to modern technology. I mean, we might not get into the debate about ebooks versus physical books, but having that ability to switch between either or at times can really help, especially if you're multitasking, especially me in college. Uh, I was like running around the campus all the time, so I'd listen to an audiobook, but then sometimes I'd want to, you know, if I'm doing nothing, I might as well just read a book and do it. And mm. I like having that versatility compared to having like a 10,000 page book in my pocket weighing yeah. me down do you think there are any other differences between like a physical book and an ebook besides that space issue um well I, it's so i'm thinking of doing a whole video about this so i've been thinking about it a lot it depends on the book if it's a fantasy book like i'm actually reading through the wheel of time right now and there's this beautiful glossary reading it as an ebook is a nightmare if you're looking for that glossary compared to uh, reading the physical book like it de it depends really on the the book that you're reading because mm -hmm. sometimes certain things that you need to have access to become harder to actually get than to actually read the book and vice versa at times mm. yeah i'm actually considering trying to read like physically read all the cosmere books i've listened to so far because that's all I've done so far is listen. So uh, I'm interested to see like how different it would feel if I actually read it instead. Yeah, I think that the thing about reading is it's more, it is more active than listening. Because like listening or when you're reading something, you're like legitimately interpreting signals or symbols on a page. And there's an extra like step in your mind that that requires. And I think that that active effort does add a little something extra, in my opinion, to to the experience of reading, mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody is basically giving you the information. It's it's different. And I that's why I like to use them in different um, contexts, depending on what I'm reading. But that's how I. That's how I see it, basically, is is physically reading is more of an active uh, pursuit, whereas um, doing audiobooks is more you're passively um, taking it in. Yeah, I think for me, like I do that when I do puzzles or I'll do something. I'll listen to an audiobook to relax rather than I'm sitting down and I'm reading. And actually thinking of it now, I actually have a good example of this why the audiobook is good for certain things and bad for others is I have... You know the name of the one this is actually my annotated version of it uh. <laughs> and the thing though is if you listen to it you're going to get a completely different experience it's actually kind of ironic because the whole story is told like auditory so it's it, it's perfect for an audiobook but right. then when you get into a lot of the literary devices that patrick Rothfuss is doing you're missing out on a lot of the clues and stuff because some things are worded in a weird way where it makes sense later on in the narrative compared to vice versa and you don't get that through the audiobook you're getting that straight rather than like how would you even know that like the two characters speak seven words to each other when it comes to that like, oh you know it takes seven words for someone to fall in love you wouldn't know that if you listen to the audiobook unless mm. you're reading the book and you're a mad person like i am <laughs> man i get sad whenever i'm reminded of the name of the wind because we've been waiting for that third book for 10 years now Do you want to hear something even sadder <laughs> what uh, uh it's been 10 years since we've gotten a song of ice and fire as of oh. as of this week that's i mean i'm not as i i haven't read all of those ones so i'm not as sad about that well we're getting close but... we're getting to the 10th edition well the 10 year anniversary for the wise man's fear that's coming up yeah. next year <laughs> it's coming up it's coming up so hopefully he gets busy but i don't know we'll, we'll see <laughs> that, that's a debate we'll for, for another time we can take yeah, his time exactly. as long as it's good i i, yeah, I feel you i feel you Gotcha. I, I'm definitely going to update 
um, on this video once I actually uh, start reading the books. Not that I've never read fiction, I have. It's just I've done listening way more in, in proportion to uh, um, reading. The last yeah. one, the last one I actually like physically read, I think, was the Kyoshi book. Mm. Yeah. Okay. From Avatar. Nice. Uh, everyone keeps telling me to read them, and every time I think about <laughs> it, like I'll put it off for another week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's I thought like it was the enjoyable. Funny thing about it, I, I, I really, I would love to read them. It was good. It was definitely a, a more adult uh, esque version of Avatar: The Last Airbender. But yeah, I, I appreciated that. But so, as you were reading it, did you um, notice anything? Is it your preference? Because if you, because the Kyoshi books are not that long ago, um, was it uh, preference while you were physically reading? It's like, do you, did you, were you reading it wishing that you were listening to it, or was it like, uh, see, were you now this is interesting in? because I listened to the second one, but I read the first one, so okay, so it's a, I have that exact answer for you. Let's see, <laughs> just gotta think about it a little bit. Which one I prefer mm -hmm. more? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure if one was necessarily better than the other. Uh, I th I enjoyed both, basically. I mm. I enjoyed the fact that when I ha had to read, like sit down and read the Kyoshi books, I was like doing nothing else but reading. Right. So it was, I had a sort of sense of peace, um, like zero distractions. Mm -hmm. But I think while I was listening to the second Kyoshi book, there, there would be like things that I might have been doing at the same time, like the activities mentioned before. Right. Yeah. Do you notice, do both of you notice any difference between your retention of information um, from books that you've read versus listened to? Um, yes, I think for me personally, when it comes to audiobooks, that's I usually do that as like the reread because some things that I'm retaining from depending on what book that I'm reading, sometimes I might be wildly misinterpreting things. But when I listen mm. to the audiobook, oh, wait, why am I misinterpreting this? Seems perfectly clear. That's because <laughs> sometimes when I'm reading, I'm thinking ahead or I'm looking at the structure of it compared to just taking it straight at times. And that's kind of mm. the the interesting thing about it is retention it, it's different because sometimes it's like when you're eating food while watching a movie compared to watching it is you're getting two different <laughs> two different experiences right which do you prefer <laughs> oh uh well i like reading because then i could just my, my imagination flies but like i said if i'm doing like a separate like a reread for a book i, I meant I'll do the, an the, the, the eating and that, that you just mentioned oh that that see that depends on what movie it is if it's a bad movie i'm like mm, this burger is so good but if it's like a movie where you have to like lean in a little bit mm -hmm. i'm like i'll eat later are, brain are you gonna be watching tenet while eating oh i'm not gonna watch tenet like i told my friend he's like we're gonna rent tenet like you know you can do that i'll just take a walk around the curb for about four hours and you're good <laughs> right yeah, so so maybe uh, maybe um, I'll have more of a opinion on the matter once I start rereading. Because I can I even call it re yeah I mean like reading it for the first time, but having already listened to it basically. Mm -hmm. So I I mean I've re-listened to a lot of books, and I do notice that I miss a lot of information, or either either that or I forget it. Because on sometimes the second rereads, uh, re-listens, I, I would just, it's almost as if it were new. You know what I mean? Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's definitely something that I've noticed as well. I feel like for whatever reason, I'm able to retain um, certain details in books that I physically read versus books that I listened to. The ones that I physically read, I'm able to retain the information a lot more easily and even over longer periods of time, too, I've noticed, um, especially if the book has an impact on me. If I don't care about it, then it doesn't matter either way. I suppose <laughs> I forget it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the because I one of the books that I listened to um, a couple years ago was The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. 
And it was a very interesting story, but I almost feel like I want to go back and physically read it because I don't necessarily remember all the the points of of her life. And so I think that would be an interesting one to revisit and maybe see if I'm able to pick up some details that I missed the first time. Yeah, I think for me also it depends on like the material because I remember listening to Will Wheaton read Ready Player One and really liking it, but then when I actually read it and read it through the like shorthand the way that I normally read, I'm like, this is this is okay. And then I read Ready Player <laughs> Two and like I don't want to listen to that audiobook. I feel like oh, I wouldn't wow. be so it'd be so bad. But that's kind of the thing. It's like there's also certain books for me personally that I will read and then I will purchase the audiobook to re-listen to and that for me is the Dresden Files because I love the person that does all the audiobooks for that. That's James Marsters, who is so fantastic in that that it's so much fun that I'll actually finish a Dresden Files book and then re-listen to it and have the exact same experience, but his performance just changes it so slightly that it becomes so much more enjoyable in ways where it feels like I can just snuggle up a little bit and listen to it. It's great. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we, we each have our preferences, and I think as long as it's a good story, and in the case of the audio, as long as it's a good performance, I think um, both end up being good experiences. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's an embarrassment of riches that we are afforded in the modern age. <laughs> well, yeah, especially when it comes to audiobooks. I think the thing that people keep forgetting about it is it's like audiobooks are there for people that can't read. Like, I know people that listen to audiobooks because they, they either have dyslexia or actually, you know, they're legally blind. And audiobooks mm. for me are such a beautiful resource to have, especially when it comes to them, because it ex you can experience books without having the, you know, the fear of, you know, reading, because for me, I'm dyslexic, but yet I still mm. power through it. But, you know, audiobooks will always be there. And it's such a wonderful tool to access information. You, you know, like you said, you do self-help books or history books or anything in between. You you have that information in many ways. And there's some books that makes me sad when I don't see an audiobook version of it, because mm. I want to have that option mm -hmm. regardless. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, is there anything else you guys feel like expressing before we close off Ooh, um maybe audiobook recommendations if you had one audiobook you had to give to someone what would it be <laughs> mm, let's see i mean i'm just gonna say like any of the <laughs> brandon sanderson books <laughs> stormlight archive <laughs> uh go with way of kings <laughs> nice. um i will I'll probably say the last the, the last audiobook that I listened to was pretty good. Um, it was Cormac McCarthy's The Road. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it was it was a very interesting re uh, listen. Listen. <laughs> so yeah, definitely pick that one up if if you're if you're up for it. So for me, it would probably be. Uh, so this is gonna be a weird one. It's actually so it's the King Killer Chronicles. But the United States version of it that has the um, audio person Nick Podell, because in the UK they have a completely separate audiobook, which is like a British voice, and they're two separate experiences. But it's so much fun to listen to that story like orally rather than just reading it, because you're getting the exact same experience the way that the narrative is telling you, rather than reading it. Which I love that so much. So the, I'm a nerd in that the way. one that you recommend is the UK one or the regular one? The regular United States. So when the other one's written by a game named like Rupert Degas, I think his name is, but it's like very, you know, British in how it's delivered. But I like the Nick Podell one a lot more. It's either pick your poison, but they're both fun. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are about audiobooks versus physical books, um, which one you prefer and um also give us a recommendation for an audiobook. All right. Thanks for joining us in the discussion. Thank you for joining us in the discussion, Zach. <laughs> it's it's a pleasure as always. All right. Later. Bye. <laughs>